Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As promised, today I am going to be showing you a flip through of the Master Books Language Lessons for Living Education 1. This is new for this year. So before we do that though, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, share this video, like this video. And for those of you who are new to my channel, I'm Rachel, I'm a homeschooling mom of three. This is my sixth year homeschooling. I have a first grader, a fifth grader, and a eighth grader. Let's get into it. So this is the language lessons for living education from Master Books level one. I already took out, okay. So I took this to Office Depot and I had them cut the binding off so that I could spiral bind this because we have done this book before and it's very thick. And I even took out all the teacher's, um, teacher's guide things in here and it's still very thick. So, you know, as you get through the middle of the year, I just wanted the book to be able to lay flat. The spiral binding does not cost that much to do. So I have put together an entire binder of stuff just for me, which I wasn't really intending to show in this video. Okay, so I made a tab just for the language lessons one teacher stuff so the scope and sequence it will all be bound in the book already but since I had them cut the binding to take all these things off so I could put them right into my teacher's manual that's where they are so this front of the book tells you there's oral narration there's phonics practice independent reading so lots of scripture there's spelling and creating your own dictionary and there are all kinds of supplements and activity ideas for the teacher these were actually be so you notice the page number here these are actually in the back of that book. So, and then there's answer keys here. As if I need help with first grade answers, but I suppose, suppose there is a chance. And then I'm making myself a second kind of binder where I can keep track of their progress. So all of the scope and sequences for all of my children's work throughout the year, this is how I'm going to do it. Instead of writing a lesson plan as they do the work, I'm just gonna check it off here. And that's how I'm going to know what kind of progress we're making. So they do give you these lesson ideas. This is for five days a week. We'll see how that goes. Let's see. They've got two semesters worth of work. There is 180 days of work in this book. Okay, so lesson one. There is some talking about what we're going to do this lesson, some oral narration, how does the story begin? So we're reading from not too small at all. So there are some supplemental books that you are also supposed to purchase with this curriculum. There's The Door of Salvation by Ken Ham. Here's the not too small book and The Grand Canyon Adventure. So I purchased those separately. So it looks like lesson one, we're gonna be starting out in this book. We're gonna be reading about it, or sorry, reading from the book, not too small at all and then she's going to answer some questions about it we'll be in that book for several lessons and then she's going to be learning how to read and reading these little symbols to help decipher what the words are taking a quiz on what she already knows reviewing sight words some phonics practice in here and then some worksheets type the printing practice my daughter's gonna be doing a formal printing curriculum from the good and the beautiful in addition to this. Okay, and then we've got lesson two. So see, this is day five. This is what else I should have pointed out. Little itty bitty lessons per day. So day four worksheet right here. This is it, day three. Not very long at all. So if you have a child with a short attention span, this is great. And if you have a child who's thirsting for more like my child is, then just add to it. There's all kinds of things you can do here. I've also got some phonics cards so we can practice our phonics flashcards from another curriculum I've used in the past. We're going to be doing a lot of independent reading, reading aloud. We have some Abeka readers. I have tried the Abeka kindergarten program before and I didn't finish it with my second child. So I still have all those worksheets. If my child this one, if this isn't enough for her, then I will just pull out those old former Abeka worksheets and she can just go to town. So this is what it looks like from lesson to lesson. Lesson three, we've got, let's look at the picture from it's not too small at all on page nine. The clouds above the head of the mouse show what he's thinking about. What is happening in the picture on page nine? So let me just show you an example of that activity. So here's the pages we'll be focusing about. So this tells you what he's thinking about. 
so what's happening on page nine? And so then she'll be answering whatever she thinks. What is the mouse holding in his hand on page nine? And this is great dialogue between us. Um, just a fun way to engage with your child. If you Some good prompts on there. Thinking about what vowels. Exercise day one for lesson 16. I think it just, I'm flipping through multiple pages here. Some more printing practice. This says write the lowercase alphabet letter that goes with the uppercase. Day three is just this sheet. Let's see if you remember what sounds the vowels make. Do you make, do you remember the three sounds A makes? A, A, A. Do you remember the two sounds E makes? E, A. Do you remember the two sounds I make? So this will be good practice. Another picture study. Let's look at the pictures on page 10 and 11 of Not Too Small at All. Day four to work, day four, day four. Find the differences between the pictures. And then day five, and so on and so forth. And then there's these little teacher's notes here to tell you what you're gonna be doing. Review, little prompts to remind you, review your sight words. Also, don't forget the independent reading. Phonics new and review so if you make you might want to make some flashcards for your child things that they need to remember that's what those teachers tips that i showed you in my other binder would show you so this is it just for fun how many squares do you see this one's tricky one two three four five six let's see how astute to your child is and teaching them how to be observant another picture study so this is a, a picture study from a famous painting so not from the not too small book so that's thrown in there also what do you like about this painting where does this painting take place so the child is using their imagination now what's happening in the painting fun stuff Word fun, do you remember what a noun is? A noun is a thing. So my daughter would actually say a noun names a person, place, thing, activity, or idea from classical conversations, but <clears throat> that's when it's fun when you've done other curriculums too to see what they remember. I don't remember learning about a noun when I was in first grade though, so maybe that's because it was so long ago. So this is basically it. In a nutshell, this is the new language lessons for a living education. First grade, you could probably do this in kindergarten, depending how far ahead your child may be. I'm flipping through in larger chunks now. Let's see where they would, let's see where she'll be by the end of the year. She'll be reading sentences and doing some punctuation, learning about capitalization. Okay, so then at the end of the book, they have some assessments, how to grade, how to hold your pencil. I probably should have added this in my teacher's aids. I guess I didn't really notice it. Some assessments here for each lesson, a book reading list. If they're starting to read on their own, here are some suggestions for books. Sight words, you could do that as an assessment. A basic phonics review at the end of the year. There are charts back here. These are all the phonics that's covered here this year. Spelling list. You could make copies of this for every spelling test. Or you could get those dry erase pockets and just take this and reuse it every time with a dry erase. Spelling word lists for each lesson. And then here is her own dictionary. So when she's creating her dictionary, it'll be back here. This if she needs extra pages for a certain letter. Some alphabet practice, again, you could put this inside a dry erase pocket so she could practice it frequently or you could just make copies of it. Some copy work practices with noun definitions, verb definitions. Yep, so that's it, bye.